So he took it into the, the, the town and sold it to an Armenian, a Christian Armenian, who then sold it to Christian researchers. And then he said, can you get more of these? And he said, yes. He said, show me where they are. I said, I'll bring them to you. <laughs> and finally, when he thought he'd sold it out, he showed him where the caves were. Those, that, that scripture still has not been released in its entirety to the world. In fact, the book of Isaiah, which is one of the uh, prophetic books of the Old Testament, is hermetically and sealed in the, in the Rockefeller Museum in Tel Aviv. They won't even let researchers look at it. It's not to be opened for 150 years or something. The, the Catholics and the Israeli government began to actually work together, suppressing the material. And you have to ask, well, what do the Catholics and the Israelis have in common? That they want to suppress the material. And this isn't conspiracy theory. This is, this is fact. The researchers within the, the archaeological community were complaining about this. Let us see the, the manuscript. We want to see them. Can't do that. Why not? We're still looking at them. What, what are they afraid of that are in there? Seriously, people have to think about this. What are they afraid of that are in there? Now, the fact that the Jews had tribes living in Medina was a clear proof that they knew that there was a prophet coming to that place. Salman al farisi was told by a monk in Syria that there would be a prophet in the end of time that would show up in Yathrib. And it's in the books. And he would have such and such signs. Harak al the the emperor, when he sent the Tanukhi to the Prophet he asked him, he said, see if he reads the letter. See if he mentions the night and the day. See if there's anything between his shoulder blades. And that man became a Muslim in the time of Muawiyah, who reports that. And the Sahaba witnessed that. They witnessed the questions that were posed to him by the emperor. Uh, they knew, they had knowledge. So the Prophet was the first sign of the beginning of the end. And then the Prophet said that the next sign, there would be six. The next sign would be the opening of Bayt al-Maqdis. Now Bayt al-Maqdis is a very important place because it's the place in which the three traditions have something in common there. The Christians see it as uh, the place in which Jesus will establish, according to the evangelicals, you'll get different opinions about this. But they see it as the New Jerusalem will be established as a capital for the millennial period of Christ. This is the modern evangelical belief. It's a 19th century belief. It's a bidah in their tradition. The Catholics did not believe that. They thought it was metaphorical, allegorical. That's the way Augustine interpreted it. The modern evangelicals, which are the fastest growing by proselytization religion. We grow by, we always say the Muslim fastest growing religion. We're the fastest reproducing religion. <laughs> Seriously, we're the fastest reproducing religion. And there's something to be said for that. But we are not the fastest growing religion in terms of conversion. The fastest growing religion in terms of conversion is Pentecostal Christianity. They've had 50 million conversions in South America alone. The South Americans were Catholic. They have worked very seriously. And there is a very strong link between the Israeli government and Pentecostal Christians. The Pentecostals in the United States support them. And one of the very interesting things about the Pentecostals is that they have television stations and radio stations 24 hours a day, they're talking about the end is near, the end is near. The Jews are announcing two years ago that the red hyper was born. People don't even know what this stuff means, what the red hyper. Because they believe that a red hyper would be born in Palestine right before the coming of the Messiah. Now they can clone it, for all we know. You know, they can do that now. They can make it red, purple, pink, whatever their scripture said, they can work it out. And so we don't know. The point is, they're claiming that it was born. The Christian support of the Jews in America is extraordinary. In classical Christianity, 
the Jews were seen as a curse because they rejected the covenant, the new covenant. That's why it's called the New Testament. It's the Old Testament, the New Testament. They rejected the covenant and for that reason they lose their special status as God's chosen people. This was the traditional Catholic and Orthodox view. But with the Protestant Reformation and the rise of new interpretations of the Bible, you got the evangelicals beginning to say no. In fact, the Jews were still the chosen people. And not only that, that the Messiah would come, he would establish his state in Israel, the Jews would be redeemed by their acceptance of him the second time around. Not the first time. And so this is the modern version. These people are very active and the Muslims are asleep because they're active in the Muslim land. They have missionaries that go as nurses, as doctors to the heartland of the Muslims pretending not to be missionaries. And, and I know this with corroborated evidence. I have no doubt about this. They have conversions in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, Turkey, <laughs> Iran. Wherever you find weakness amongst the Muslims, they have conversion. And this is unprecedented because the Muslims traditionally did not convert to other religions. Now another thing that people should be aware of is that the Americans now have put forth a law in the Senate which is the freedom of religion. It's a global act that the Americans will sanction any country that does not allow a person to apostate from his religion to another religion. That that, that country will be sanctioned if they do not allow churches to be built on their territory. This is right now, this is going on in America. There's a move because the Christians are very strong in America. You know, you if you watch too much TV, uh, you'll get a very distorted view of America. People forget about middle America, the Bible Belt. If you live where I live in California, it's a pagan land. They're pagans. They worship sun, the moon, uh, goddesses, uh, sprites, witches. Uh, I could go on and on. They, they got everything. Yogurt, I think they probably have a temple for yogurt. Avocado sandwiches. And if you go to New York, uh, it's also, they're not, they're, they're, they don't believe, they're just seculars, right? They're, they're, their religion is cynicism. And they promote it actively in a, in a uh, uh, sitcom called Scheinfeld. Uh, this was the, the religion of cynicism being broadcast to millions of people, learning the religion of cynicism, making fun of other people, laughing at people's misfortunes. Right? I mean, this is, this is taught proselytizing. There's many ways to proselytize. So the second type of, uh, anyway, the six, Beit Amoktis, and then two deaths, Mautani, two deaths that will take you There's two deaths, and there are different interpretations about that. Many of our scholars say that it's Omar and Uthman, the death of Omar and Uthman. Others say it were plagues that were afflicted in certain places. There's no doubt that Omar, his death was predicted not only uh, by the Prophet Sallallahu when he was on Jabal Uhud and the Jabal began to shake and he said, do you shake and on you as a prophet and two martyrs? Because Uthman and Omar were on him that day on the mountain.